everyone. Today I want to share a card that we made last Saturday, just two days ago actually, <laughs> at Stamp Camp. I always uh, cut a couple extra kits in case someone has a, makes an error or something and wants an extra kit to start over. So I have a couple extra and I thought I would make them with you. Now this is a card that I did not design myself. It is a case from the catalog. If you're not familiar with the word case, um, it's C-A-S-E and it stands for copy and share it with everyone. And Stampin' Up! encourages us to case the catalog all the time. So I am casing this card right here I did change it slightly um, to make it a little simpler for me for stamp camp because we have I usually around 12 people and so I needed to make sure I had um, enough time to finish what I wanted to finish and um, so we're doing this one here with a couple of differences and I want to show you how they put on that gilded leafing now I always thought that gilded leafing when I've used it in the past I've always used it with heat and stick powder and that's I think the way that most people do use it however they were showing it here with the liquid glue and I thought hmm let's try that that is an interesting idea and I wanted to see how well that worked I did it at home first and it worked great so I thought I'm gonna show everybody how to do that so sometimes it's nice to just kind of go through the catalog I like to recreate the catalog samples a lot when I first get a new set just because I feel like that helps me jump into the stamp set usually they end up when they make the catalog samples the artisans do a great job and they use a lot of the products you know they try to use every stamp or at least most of them in different ways so it's really a great idea to kind of case the catalog to get your creative juices flowing and then branch out on your own and make your own things so anyway we're gonna do this one right there Okay, so it uses Friends Are Like Seashells, which is a really pretty stamp set, and I want to point out that these stamps are actually bigger in real life. For example, oops, look at the size here on that stamp. So these are all much bigger in real life than they are shown here. They are the correct size in the catalog though. And then not only is there a stamp set, but there is a die set and an embossing folder. So that's another thing I wanted to show at Stamp Camp. I put the dies in my box here for some reason, um, but they do cut out the stamps. You'll notice it's one die, that's a few dies, but one big die. And this cuts out many of the larger stamps. So it cuts out this one, well, I got it upside down here, but it cuts out this one and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. <laughs> also it gets cut out from there. So if you wanted to only cut you know, this out, you can use a small piece of cardstock and place it right here and run it through your machine and only cut out one. You don't have to cut out the entire thing at once, um, but you could. And it's kind of fun that way as a really pretty background, which we're gonna use it so we're going to use it individually and as a whole on the card. And then you've got these other dies that cut out the other stamps like the starfish, the sand dollar, and some of the sea grasses. And one more shell, the littler one. So anyway, it's a really fun set to work with. And then the embossing folder is great too. So it's kind of a three-piece um, three piece stamp set. Stamp bundle, I guess. Um, it came out from a couple catalogs ago. So... You can even look back and see a lot of samples for this one online, I'm sure. Friends are like seashells. I know I've used it a lot myself. Okay, so I'm using a base of very vanilla. Here's one thing I changed in the catalog. They didn't put a matte piece down. I mean, they, they went straight onto the base. And I like to work on a separate piece in case I make a mistake. Um, I like to only have worked on this base piece. <laughs> it's just me. I'm kind of weird that way. Okay, so I'm going to start on that. And then we're using this paper here, which is called Texture Chic, I believe. And that is a brand new paper in the newer annual catalog. I think Texture Chic. Yes, Texture Chic. And it's very textural. <laughs> One side has um, no gilding on it, no um, foil. And the other sides all have gold foil in some way. So it's very um, kind of rustic, textural. I uh, really, my favorite, I haven't used it yet because it's my favorite, <laughs> I'm a little bit hoarding it, is this one with the dots. So pretty. And I love this one. And on the back, you've got different kind of seasonal looks, so it kind of can go in a lot of ways here. Here's shells, which I thought about changing it up and using that one on my card, but I didn't. I wanted to go exactly like the catalog. And then this one has floral. I don't have much of that one left. I think I have a bigger piece coming. Okay, here's some nice foil design. The colors here are soft succulent, um, 
Evening Evergreen, Petal Pink, and Sahara Sand. This one is kind of like a board. It's like a rough board and a lot of splatter. And then you've got this on the front. All right, we saw this floral one. I've used some of it, so I don't have all of it. This one has a little bit of a floral background. And then on the other side, you've got some foiling. Real pretty. I forget what color that is. I'll have to look at the packaging. Okay, this one I hardly have any left. One side has these snowflakes, and the other side has the pattern we're using on today's card. And then here's one more. This one has some leaves, so very fall. And then on the other side, another pattern. Really fun. Let me see what colors that was again. I missed one. Soft suede, mango melody. I knew there was kind of an orangish, orangish and pool party, so it does have quite a good range of colors. So that's what this is from. And I cut this at two and a half by four, and it's gonna go right here on the end, and I offset it from the side by about a half an inch. Whoops. Okay, now I have already cut two of these out. For Stamp Camp, I cut some ahead of time. I had my daughter do it. She cut quite a few. So I had a lot left over. I think she went a little overboard. But all we needed really was a couple shells. And people could choose whichever ones they wanted. I'm going to go with what the catalog suggested. Just why not? And I'm going to cut out this big one here. And then I'm going to show you how the die and um, embossing folder work together because we need it again on this pearl paper. But I thought you don't really need to see me do it three times. Oops, that's a little sharp there. So I'll only do it the one time. And these are pre done already. I've seen a lot where they use it a solid piece like this and add all kinds of details, and it's really pretty. So it's a really fun die. I'm going to grab this one. So I gave a challenge to the stamp camp attendees. I told them to save their pieces, and if they posted on our Facebook group, Beth's Paper Cuts Idea Sharing Group, I hope you'll join me, uh, if they post something they made with the leftover pieces, they could choose something from my little sale. I have like some retired trinkets, you know, different things that Stampin' Up's had over the years, those little cute little ladybugs or various buttons or sequins and things like that. They could choose something from my retired embellishments or they could pick um, I have some retired papers that are you know packs that I haven't quite finished off and they could pick something from there so hopefully someone will take part in my challenge I think somebody already has so they were Kim was really fast she posted a card um, later already so that's cool hopefully we'll get a few more I still have a lot of pieces left over so maybe I'll send them out to people I don't know how to. I used to do that more during COVID. I was sending out a lot of card kits. So I, I stopped for a while now that we're kind of back in the regular in person classes. But I do have a few of these left over. So maybe I'll send some out. Maybe I can have people send me a self addressed stamped envelope. Maybe that'll work. How about, um, I'll think about that and put it on my Facebook group. So I'm just kind of using this liquid glue in the areas that are sticking up. And I'm kind of missing some. For some reason, I'm kind of jumping all around. This is going to get covered, so I'm not going to bother going down here. Now, you don't want to go straight in with your foil right now, just because this glue will smear then, so you want to let it sit for a second. That's just something I learned on my own here at... Um, I'm not sure how they did it. That's kind of how I thought would be best. So I'm going to put the glue in here and then we'll cut out that third die cut while we let this kind of set up a little bit. Okay. So I've got that. I'm going to let that aside. 
and we'll cut out from our pearl piece. Now this is a pearl cardstock. This is in the annual catalog as well. It comes in a two pack of 12 by 12. It's beautiful. Now I didn't cut it big enough to do the entire die at once because we don't need the whole thing and I was trying to save on this paper because <laughs> it's so pretty and I was being a little stingy I guess. Um, so we're going to take this big die and all I want is the top. So I'm going to just put it like this. And so you can do a couple different ways. You can cut first and then run through the embossing folder. I've seen people do the embossing folder first and then use the die. I was a little worried that that might, if you do the um, embossing and then run the die through, that going through a second time might press down on your bumped and your raised areas and then you wouldn't see them as well. I did try it and it, I think it, it looks the same to me either way. So I don't, I think that the, the height of the die itself kind of keeps the bumps, the raised area from getting squished, but you can decide what's right for you. I like doing the die cut first. So for that, we need our machine and we need our base plate and the little thin plate and one of your clear pieces and then another clear on top. And I'm going to hold this over my garbage can and kind of Okay, now when we emboss it, we're going to take away all of these, and we're just going to use the base plate and the gray, because it's a 3D embossing folder. So you want the raised areas to come up. This is double-sided with the pearlescent, so you don't have to worry so much about it. But I want my raised areas up, so I'm just kind of looking for the pattern and placing my paper down on the pattern and then holding it while I close. Okay, and then you're gonna put it between the gray, so you're not gonna get to see it go through. Okay. Now in person, this is beautiful. I'm not sure what'll show up on video, but the nice shells give all that texture and it's really pretty. There's texture on some of the leaves. It's just a really pretty, really, really pretty die. A really pretty embossing folder. Okay, especially on this pearl paper. Okay, so how I'm going to attach these, I'm just going, oh, and it's starting to set up here. See how it's kind of turning clear? That's what I want. Okay, so I'm going to glue this down, give that another moment. And I think we put glue on the pink one first, so we'll go ahead and do that. lay that down and I don't worry about putting glue behind every little seaweed I think it's nice that some of it doesn't have glue because then it kind of floats off the page and kind of gives a little more dimension you get some shadow behind some of the seaweed okay so let's work on this now okay so if you've never used the gilded leafing before here it is and it comes in a small jar now, when you open the small jar, it is the leaf is so light as air, and it puffs up. So you really kind of want to open the jar over something else that's going to contain it. And so I opened it in here, and then I've decided I'm just going to leave it in here because I don't want it to. I don't want to worry about it transferring it from one to the other. I mean, if you sneeze on it or blow on it somehow, it's just going to poof everywhere. So mine lives in this whole container, and I work over this whole container. That's what I do. So we're going to do that. But I do want to show you another product that comes out July 1st. It's in the July to December mini catalog, and it's really awesome, and I just got it, and we used it on the leafing. Okay, so here it is. It's called the Embossing, what is it called? Embossing Editions Toolkit, and it's this whole kit. Now, we've sold something like this in the past, but the major difference here on this is that the old style one had a plug here. So when you wanted to empty it and put the embossing powder back in its container, you had to pull out the plug. And sometimes that action of pulling out the plug kind of made you go, Whoop, and then the stuff in here kind of went, Whoop, 
<laughs> and spilled. So I love that they've changed it. See, it's like they just kind of improved and it just twists and then you can pour your embossing powder back into the jar. So this is awesome. I didn't use it with the leaf because I, I work over that now, but that's awesome. You get an embossing buddy and this is a little pack of, I'm not sure what's inside of it, some kind of chalky type substance and it gets the static off your cardstock before you emboss. So if you know you're going to emboss something, you kind of rub this on your cardstock, kind of like a gymnast puts chalk on their hands. I'm not sure what's in here, but same, same kind of idea. It gets, it's going to get the static off your cardstock so that you don't have all the little flyaways when you put the embossing powder on. It's not staticky and it's not getting everywhere. So that's the embossing buddy. You also get this, which I actually was in the market for, a reverse tweezers, which kind of gives like a third hand. You know, if you want somebody to hold your bow for you, it holds it closed. Normally tweezers work, they're always open, and then when you press them, you're pressing them closed. This is the opposite. So you can put it down on your bow or put it down on something, and it's going to hold it closed how you want it so you can end up tying your bow or doing whatever it is you need to do. We used this at Stamp Camp to kind of um, pull some ribbon through our, we made these and we were pulling, anyway we used this and it was really great. I loved having it. But for the gilded leafing we're going to use this. This is great for embossing and it's great for leafing and I'll show you how we used it. So yes it's just a paintbrush but it's really nice. <laughs> okay. So for our gilded, I think we did this one first. So it's kind of getting clear. That's what I was looking for. So it's starting to dry. So it's still tacky, but it's this is a huge piece. Look at that. Okay, so you're just going to take some of your leafing and you're going to lay it down on your piece here. Um, you can also go like that and pick some up. Okay, and then if your glue was still really wet, the problem would be that when you pressed it down you would kind of get glue in areas you may not want but ours is starting to dry so then you're just going to kind of take the brush or your hand but the brush worked really nicely doesn't it and go like this and get that leafing off of the non-glued areas like so so the areas were that were still a little lumpy where I got kind of the glue lump I did smear it a little bit. So let it dry a little bit. See, like right that one. I'm a little worried about that one. So I'll go like this. I'm just going to be real careful. So I'm going to pick up some leaf. <laughs> it's so fun. You can move it around. You don't have to do it like that. You don't have to press it in. Um, you can pick up a big sheet of it and press it down. I had glue on my finger and so it's kind of sticking. Okay. That was the one I told you that was still kind of wet and I was worried about. And I said I'd be careful and then I wasn't. <laughs> okay. So like I said, let it get kind of clear so it's you don't see a lot of the white glue anymore and it'll work better. But it's real pretty and I'm going to layer things on top so that we're good. And here this one is really good. All right, so that is really fun. If you haven't used the gilding, the gilded leafing check it out. So then I'm just going to kind of clean off my brush. And now it's got a little bit of glue on it, so I'll clean it again when it gets a little drier. There. Okay. Perfect. Now let's put our card together. So I'm going to go ahead and layer. I'm going to put the green one down first just because I keep calling it green. It's soft succulent. <laughs> uh, I want to put that down first just because I really, and it's kind of a shame to cover up that little guy. I feel bad. Maybe I should cut him out. I should have thought of that, huh? Maybe cut him out and put him up higher. But I already glued it down. I didn't think of that until just now. All right, and then we're going to put this one, petal pink, right there. Okay. And then I'm layering that down onto a card base, and then we'll put our sentiment on top. But I do want to add a couple little stamps to my base first. I'm going to put a little shell. My husband's office door is so loud. <laughs> I can hear it opening and closing. Okay, and then I'm going to put a little bit of seagrass like that. Okay, 
just wanted to put a little something on the inside. You can go even crazier. There's a really cute sand dollar that I love from this set. Oh, and look, my finger was inky, so hopefully we'll cover that. Yes, we will. All right, now you can put this up on dimensionals if you wanted to add more dimension. I'm going to not because I already have a lot of dimension going with my shells, and we're going to add some dimensionals on the sentiment. And I like for my cards to get mailed. I want them out in the mail. I want people to receive them. And sometimes when they're real puffy, I worry that, that they're not going to get them. I've never had that happen. I don't know why I worry. If I am worried about it, I usually put like two stamps or I put one of those um, butterfly stamps that have more postage on them. Um, the lady at the post office told me to do that and um, one time. So now I always have a sheet of butterfly stamps in my room so that <laughs> if I do feel like maybe it needs an extra stamp little less expensive than two stamps. So this is Happy Birthday to My Beautiful Friend. That's from the stamp set. Friends are like seashells. And I am going to put that one up on dimensionals. You can add some really pretty um, shells to your envelope too. I wait till I mail it when I do that because if I, if I start putting st um, stamps on my envelopes then somehow they get separated from the card. I don't know how they, but they always do. And then I have envelopes with shells or what have you, and then I can't find the card, and then I end up not using. I end up in a hurry and making another envelope, and then I end up with too many envelopes with stamps on them that don't go. So I wait till they go in the mail, then I stamp them. <laughs> but if you're more organized, stamp them at the same time while you got all your stuff out. Okay, so then I just doubled up my linen thread, and we're going to attach this with a glue dot. So if you're still here, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate the views, and if you could give it a like, that's so great. Um, helps other people see my videos. I think there's some kind of algorithm that YouTube uses. <laughs> and that would be really appreciated. I would love it if you would give it a like, and click the little bell so you get notified of the next time a video posts. And here is my catalog case with the Gilded Leafing. So um, this is in the annual catalog, and like I said, there's a new mini catalog coming out, and that um, embossing kit will be in that. And it's $27, but you know what, in, in July and August, if you're watching this then, there's celebration going on, and during celebration, you get to choose a free item with every um, $50 that you spend. It's really awesome. So um, July and August will be a very good uh, month to purchase some things like that. So I hope you like this.